Packing Party people. It's your girl, Nicole Bannister, AKA Nikki Bands. Today is Tuesday and you already know the vibes. Welcome back to Nikki Bands Live. <laughs> Hey, 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 what's good, everybody? Oh my goodness gracious, it is so good to be back with you all here today. As many of you know, I just celebrated the one year anniversary of Nikki Bands Live, which was incredible. If any of y'all tuned in, it was a super emotional show. I was on for the first 20 minutes by myself, and then I brought my parents on to go live with me. We had an incredible conversation about the show for the next 20 minutes, and then I brought my brother, Julian on. So it was a family affair, y'all, and there was no better way to celebrate the one year anniversary of this incredible IGTV show than to bring on the whole Bannister family for a little takeover, y'all. And I know y'all had fun with that one. <laughs> Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? I see our very special guest of today is already in the building. What's up, Erica? I'm gonna bring you on very, very soon. I see we got Sharice in the building. I see we got Helga in the building. I got, I see we got my friend Dr. Socrates in the building. We got Mama and Papa Bands in the building. I uh, see so we got Adelia. Hold up, hold up. We got Christine. Okay, what's up, everybody? It is so good to have all of you beautiful humans here today. Let me pin a young comment real quick so we can make sure y'all all know exactly what you are here for today. So look, party people if you are brand new to Nikki Bands Live you just gotta know that every single Tuesday I am bringing you exclusive one-on-one -on -one conversations with the most incredible artists entertainers entrepreneurs activists content creators and influencers from around the world every single Tuesday is a different guest from a different country and I'm telling you Nikki Bands Live never disappoints you get the most diverse perspectives from the most diverse people all over the world. And the one thing that all these people have in common, they are movers and shakers. It doesn't matter if they are a Nollywood superstar with 3 million followers, or they are a WNBA player, or they are a professional actress in India. It doesn't matter who the people are, they are all making serious moves in their sector and in their industry. And I bring them on here with you all to have a real honest conversation about their life, about their successes, their challenges, and their struggles, and all the things so we can make this world a more better and inclusive place. You feel me? So if you're not following me on Instagram already, at they call me bands, go ahead and give me a follow and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All you gotta do is type in Nicole Bannister onto YouTube and you are gonna find your girl. All right, party people, oh my goodness. It's like, you know, I took last week off. I took last week off, it was like the first time, the first Tuesday, I didn't go live on, on Tuesday. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, like how do I even go live? Like I, <laughs> like I took one week off and I'm like, I lost, I lost my touch, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Just kidding, y'all. Just kidding. All right, y'all. What we're going to do now is bring on our very, very, very special guest. Today, I have the one and only Erica McCall. Erica is a WNBA player, party people. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> She is a professional basketball player, but not only does she play professional basketball in the United States in the WNBA, but she also plays overseas as well. She's played in Hungary and she's played in Turkey. And it's gonna be amazing to be able to have a dialogue with her about the realities of what it means to be playing basketball professionally in the United States, as well as overseas. Not only that, my girl loves to go live and talk to people just like me. She has an incredible podcast called Bird's Eye View, where Erica is interviewing professional athletes, professional basketball players who are overseas just like her. So it's super cool, super dynamic. So from one host to another, you already know this is gonna be a good interview, y'all. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's time for Nikki Vans Live. I'm gonna bring on the guest of the hour right now. I know Erica's in the building. It's time to shine. Thank you all for being here. I love you so much. Thank you for rocking with me one whole year of Nikki Bands Live. This is the very first episode of year two of Nikki Bands Live. We did it one whole year, y'all. Hey, hey, yay, hey, yay, hey, yay. Hey. And now we keep it moving and we keep it shaking. So everybody, without any further ado, you know I love my sound effects. You know I'm gonna get a little drum roll going for us as I bring Erica on. Here we go, here we go, here we go, hey. <laughs> oh, 
Let's get it. Hello. What's up? Hey, hey. What's up, Erica? How are you? I'm doing well, and yourself? Oh, I'm so good. It's so good to meet you. I'm so glad we're doing this. Welcome to Nikki Vans Live. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. This is such a treat. Anybody who knows me knows I absolutely love basketball and played <laughs> all in middle school and high school. Didn't play in college, but that's okay. And so to have you on is just a dream come true. This is such a blessing. So welcome. Thank you. I'm excited. Yes, me too. Me too. Okay, so first off, we know that you're a jet setter just like me. So where in the world are you right now? I'm currently in Bakersfield, California, uh, but I take off for Spain in two days. So it's <laughs> always on the move. She said, I'm going from Bakersfield to Barcelona, y'all. She said, get out of here. Get out of here. They weren't ready for that one. They, they weren't ready for that one. And I'm glad you said Bakersfield because, you know, Erica, I always like to start off every episode of Nikki Vans Live by telling people how I know the guests who are on my show. And so All we right. were actually connected through Bakersfield, through one of my homegirls, JT, uh, who's a high school basketball player right now. And, you know, I had done a speech for the four dream builders in the four dimension as an alum of the program. I know you're an yes. alum of the program too. Yes. So I had done a speech for them and she was like, oh, you have this live show. She was like, I know somebody who could come on your show. I'm going to connect <laughs> you to Erica. I was like, okay. And then here we are. So shout out JT. Shout out Mikey Hay in the four dimension. That's four right. Dream shout out to Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is truly incredible. And I have to say, so I actually lived in Bakersfield for my last two years of high school. And okay. I played basketball for Stockdale. So I know we got a young rival. Ah, shoot. Yeah, we don't <laughs> like y'all. Yeah, I know. I know. But I did the math. We didn't overlap. I think you started at yeah, Ridgeview I don't remember right you. after I had graduated. So yeah, I would have remembered good. you. I would have remembered you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I think we have some mutual friends, though. I think you know my girl, Jalay Kinder. I think you oh, know. my cousin. Yeah. Oh, she's your cousin. See? Yeah. There we go. So Jalay and I played together. Okay, <laughs> there we go. That's what's up. Yeah, it's really cool. We're just connecting all the dots. So yeah, I think. Super dope. I think with, with, like, with that being said, let's go back to, like, your early days of basketball. Let's take it all the way back to the beginning, because we know you're doing so many incredible things now, but I want to build up. So people can see the trajectory. People can see the journey. So talk to us about when you first started playing basketball and at what point did you realize like, oh shit, like I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started playing basketball pretty young. My dad was been a basketball coach my whole life. My sister, Dewana Bonner, she plays in a league. She's played basketball. So it was just natural for me to get in the game. Uh, I think I started around like five years old playing YMCA. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I started real young. Um, and, and it probably didn't take until I was um, in seventh grade where I realized I'm like, okay, like I'm pretty good at this thing and I can make this into something big. And so shout out to my sister. She was drafted um, in 2011, I believe. Um, so I got to see her go to the draft and all that. So when I saw her that, you know, that she got to live out her dream, I was like, okay, yeah, this is something I can definitely do. So seventh grade, probably age 11. Yeah. Wow. Wow, incredible. And to know, you know, from such an early age that you have this talent, you have this skill, and that could be something that drives the rest of your life is incredible. You know, I think people spend a long time in their lives trying to figure out what they're meant to do. You figured it out <laughs> in seventh grade. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and so, okay, so you have this basketball family. Like you said, your sister's playing yeah. in the league. Your dad is the head women's coach at CSUB in, in Bakersfield. Yep. Uh, we just found out Delay is your cousin, also played basketball. Yes. I remember she played at Fresno in college. You yep. know, I remember. So you got a whole basketball family around you. What was it like? Like, did you feel like there was pressure from the family to also play? Like, were there ever moments where you were like, maybe I want to do something else? And then they were like, no, you got to stay with basketball. Or was it, all right, was it always just like, it's all love. If you can do this thing, we support you 100%. Yeah, it's always been very supportive for my dad. Um, of course, I did different sports. Volleyball was terrible at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I ran track, was decent at it, hated it, though. Um, so I was like, yeah, basketball is a sport for me. And um, I was never pressured into it. You know, my dad was like, you know, this is something you want to do. I'll help you with. If you want to do something else, I'll support you with that. So we always say it's in the blood and just 
the, the love for basketball just comes natural for us. That's our, kind of our family motto. So, yeah, all of us just stuck with basketball. And so, yeah, we just we say we're one big basketball family. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I see in the chat, we got uh, Ari Burry saying here, goat family. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> An incredible basketball family here, which is so cool. And to have that support network is is unparalleled, you know, to be able to have that. Yeah, um, thank you. And so I know you play basketball a couple different places overseas now, but when I was doing some research, it looked like you actually started traveling internationally for basketball when you were younger, like in high school. Mm -hmm. You played in yep. some international tournaments. So tell us about those experiences. Yeah, when I was 16, um, I made it for the U16 USA team. Um, so I got to travel to Mexico, which is, which is good for 16 year olds. You don't have to go all the way, you know, to <laughs> Europe, you know, to start small. Um, uh, so I, I traveled to Mexico. Um, we played on that team and that's when I, I got my first gold medal. Um, U17, I went to Amsterdam, I believe. U18, we went to Spain, um, uh, to Madrid. And for the World University Games, I went to Korea. So uh, I was able to really get some passport stamps pretty darn early in my life. It's a big blessing to be able to travel the world and do what I love to do. Um, and it meet some amazing people along the way. So big blessings for, for the USA basketball experience. Mm, mm. That's absolutely incredible. To have those experiences at such a young age is really formative. You know, like, so like I told you, I lived in Bakersfield my last two years of high school. My first two years of high school, I actually lived in Singapore. So my whole oh, wow. family was moved to Singapore and lived there and having the chance to not only play sports, but eat the food, learn the music, dance the dance, you know, all those things in another country at a young age, right? Freshman, sophomore in high school was yeah. really, was really cool. I can imagine for you playing, having the ability to play sports and travel the world through that, it just changes your worldview. How did those experiences change your view of the world, I mean, not even from the sports perspective, but just in terms yeah. of you as a as a high schooler growing up, going to a place where everything was different from what you were used to. I mean, it definitely, you know, expanded my horizons in life, allowed me, you know, to uh, be adventurous with trying new foods, with, with meeting new people and learning new languages. And I think that's kind of helped me along the way just in life. And as I become a professional basketball player, because when I go play overseas, knowing that I've had those experiences allowed me to really um, indulge myself in the culture. Um, because I always say when I say on my podcast, um, when I, I talk about, you know, there's a lot of people who, who aren't made for overseas because they don't indulge themselves in the culture. Because if they don't, man, overseas absolutely sucks. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's an absolute drag. Um, so in order for you to enjoy yourself and enjoy the basketball and, you know, what you're living in for eight months, the country you're living in, you really have to dive in. You really have to try to learn the language, try different foods, um, go out and explore. Um, and with that, it just makes a better experience. So shout out to my 16 year old, you know, experience for allowing me to be able to open my mind to that, um, to where I am now. Oh my goodness. I love that. I couldn't have said it any better myself, <laughs> myself, Erica, because you're totally right. There's so many, and let me be frank, there's so many Americans in particular who go overseas and they only want to hang out in groups of other Americans. They're not trying to try yeah. new food. They're not trying to learn new languages. And I'm just like, bro, why did you go overseas and you just want to hang out with Americans? Who could have stayed exactly. in Bakersfield? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and so I just think it's dope that you were able to have that, you know, so young. Even right now, I'm coming to you from Cape Town, South Africa, uh, which is where I spend most of the year. I was in L.A. for the summer, for U.S. summer. You know, I tried to skip winter here. Uh, but I also love just traveling <laughs> around the world and being able to yeah. immerse myself in, in that which is new. So talk to us about, I mean, there's so many things I want to talk to you about on, in terms of the international front, but, you know, as, as, a, as a fan, let's talk about what is it like being in the WNBA? Like, I just, I just, yeah. I, I just have to ask you because I'm like, as, a, as any high school girl, college girl, like, that's the dream if you play basketball, right? Talk to us about what it's been like for you in the WNBA. I mean, like you said, it's a dream come true. You, you, you dream about doing something like this, you know, when I was eight years old, you know, thinking that I can make it to the WNBA. And when you do it, it's, it's, it's kind of surreal. I remember playing my first game um, and just stepping on the court like, man, I can't believe this happened. And then I remember guarding Maya Moore and I was like in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm guarding Maya Moore. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> right. it's just crazy. Uh, but the league has, it's full of ups and downs. It's, you know, mm. nothing is ever that seems, you know, as good as it seems to be. 
Um, and I learned that. You learned that being in your, your rookie season. You know, it'd be like, oh, shoot, this this ain't, you know, <laughs> what it what it's all meant to be. You know, you think you go to the league, you're going to get, you know, private jets. And, you know, you're going to have a whole bunch of fans at the game. You're going to have, you know, this fancy food and these whole special hotels. And you, and you get there and it's just like the complete opposite. You know, you, you fly in commercial and you're mm. – the hotels are, you know – they're nice, but they're not anything like luxurious or anything. And so it's pretty eye opening your rookie year. I mean, I came from Stanford and we kind of had the same experience as the league, but I know tons of players that played in the SEC, the ACC, where they fly private and, and they go out to Ruth Chris for before games and stuff like that. And it's just a completely different experience going to the league. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's obviously one of the biggest topics in professional women's basketball right this is the impetus this is the incentive for people to go play yeah. overseas because it is a different quality it's a different standard and you can see this discrepancy between what it means for you to play in the league as a woman versus what it means for a man to be playing in the league you know what i mean yeah, and yeah, so sure. so talk to us about you know what like what when did it ever cross your mind that you could play professionally overseas you know once you had already made it to mm -hmm. to WNBA status when did that come into your sort of psyche um I really I knew that um shoot in high school like you everyone knows that like if you play in the WNBA you playing overseas like that's just a part of the, the professional uh wow. basketball experience for for a woman um, so that everyone just knows that's what comes with it so I knew early that I was going to play overseas and that was going to be a part of my story Okay, okay. Uh, once again, you are proving to us that you had it all figured it out. Um, way before <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, did everybody know that in high school? I'm like, I didn't know that at Stockdale. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's clearly why I didn't make it as far as you did, my girl. <laughs> You know, I have my, my sister there, you know, to really guide me into what the professional basketball experience is like. So I had a really a, a cheat book, you know, as to what <laughs> it goes on in the league. I was in the locker room when they won, when she won her first championship. Wow. So I got to, like, just really see the culture of the WNBA. So I just kind of knew about it um, before entering for a while. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So talk to us about your first um, overseas basketball experience. Where were you? How long were you there? And like, what was the most sort of like surprising or unexpected thing when you went overseas and were playing ball versus playing in the league in the U.S.? Yeah, my first experience was um, in Hungary. I played for a small team um, in Sexart, Hungary, which is a small town, probably about 30,000 people. Uh, wow. Seems like less. Yeah, seems like less, actually. <laughs> so that's a really <laughs> small town. <laughs> Um, and I knew nothing about Hungary. Um, my cousin had did like a, a country report on it. She's like, it's cold there. That's all I knew about it, it was going to be cold there. <laughs> so I made sure I to, to went to, and got a, a winter coat. Um, <laughs> so uh, when I first got to Hungary, it was, it was very different from what I was used to. I mean, like the town was so small. It's probably like seven streetlights in the town. Um, yeah, I only like to call it city in the town. <laughs> wow. And, um, it was just very different. The language barrier was different. Um, and I learned that Hungary is act Hungarian is actually one of the top five hardest languages to learn in the world. So I was intimidated immediately by the language. I'm like, okay, how the heck am I going to learn this? Um, and I got there and um, now like my, my rookie season, you really just in for the ride. You don't really know what you get into overseas. Um, I knew now that I know what I what I stayed in was not acceptable for a basketball player to stay in for the okay. first, for their first year playing basketball, um, for at least for the level that I was at, um, and I stayed in a, a small it was a small room. Um, it had a, a kitchenette um, and a bathroom and a bed. And that was that was it. It was you know yeah, kind of yeah. like a home homewood suites. It was like that, right. um, <laughs> but less less fancier. You know, <laughs> a two star not homewood suites. <laughs> That's what it was like. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I stayed in. I didn't have a car, um, so I was walking everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, it was just, I mean, but I loved it because it was my first experience. This is all I know I was supposed to be doing. I'm like, hey, this is my first year playing. Um, and it was hard for me to adjust. I think the biggest surprise for me was that um, it was a hard adjustment for me. I'm thinking everyone knows me overseas. Usually Americans are the superstars on the team. They're going to get a lot of playing time. Um, it's going to be, you know, they're going to make buckets. They're going to average like 20, 25 points a game. And that was not the, it, you know, the situation for me. <laughs> I got there and I struggled. I struggled okay. immensely. It took me some time to get used to the playing style. 
um, okay. to get used to playing against professional basketball players of different countries that play a different style of basketball. Uh, so it took me about a month to really get used to that. And I, I struggled with it mentally. I'm like, dang, this is, this is tough. Like, I'm going to have to learn a whole new culture, get used to playing with whole new teammates. Um, and then I'm not playing well in basketball. So it was just really hard for me. Um, but in due time, I got used to everything. Um, and I, and I color the place home for four years. I ended up playing there for four years. So. Wow, wow. Well, I'm so grateful that you shared, you know, those early experiences, Erica, because I think it's so easy for folks to look at you and look at all of your success and look at your athletic prowess overseas and to think that that just came so easy and so naturally to you. So to, so to hear, you know, real talk and for you to be transparent and say in the beginning it was a struggle, you yeah. know, I think it's, it's good for, for people to remind, like, to get a, that reminder, like, okay, you know, it wasn't all just you know, roses and, and, and 30 point games, right. From the jump. And so I, yep. that's, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it was definitely tough. <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> tough. Um, and I kind of learned that it t I have an adjustment period. Every time I go overseas, I have an adjustment period where like it's, I'm just not going to score 20 points in the first game. Like it's going to be, we be combing out the kinks right here, you know, that's kind of what the first game, first couple of games are for me. But um, in, in time, like I adjust, uh, really well and I, I love you know like I said getting to know the culture and stuff like that so I'm always asking my teammates about the languages and stuff like that and um, I, I should know a lot more Hungarian than what I know for being there for four <laughs> years but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I made my way I made my way absolutely in town. fun fact for that yeah that was that was an adjustment too. being the only black person in town um, well, so like everybody was staring at me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cause I mean, I was, I was going to ask you about that. You didn't bring yeah. it up, but I was like, should I bring this up? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to stereotype Hungary or anything like that, but I can just, as someone who's well-traveled, I can just make an assumption on what most people look like. And it's like, not only are you black, you are tall. <laughs> so you, you, yes. you know, like it's very clear that you are like not from there. So, I mean, did you see differences maybe? Cause I know you played in Hungary, you played in Turkey as well. How, did you see differences in sort of how you were treated in different countries based on your race? Um, yeah, I guess I was stared at less in Turkey because there's more black people there. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it was that was an easier adaptation for me to just be comfortable who I was, you know, walking down the street and no one is like, oh, my gosh, she's so black for you, a black girl. Um, you know, <laughs> maybe they maybe they're looking at me because I'm tall, but not because I'm black um, because they have more black people there. But in Hungary, like, I just stuck out like a sore thumb. And I walk everywhere. It's a small town. So everyone knew who I was, uh, which ended up being a benefit, you know, later on in. Everyone knows who Erica McCall, you know, everyone knows that's Erica, that's Erica. So everyone was really kind to me because they knew who I was. But mm -hmm. in the beginning, I just felt like I had a, you know, a big, fat, red, X, you know, A, I was A, you know. <laughs> I right. A. That's your scarlet letter. <laughs> I was like, A on my back, um, saying, hey, she's black, she's black. So that took some time for me to adjust to. It was actually really uncomfortable for me. Um, but then, actually, uh, I played there for four years. So, actually, I think it was my third or fourth year. Um, there's this big festival they have in my town, and, and uh, everyone, my teammates are like, everyone's looking at you. And I was like, really? I don't even notice. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just got used to it. And so at that point, it was considered home. So I was like, yeah, I mean, everybody knows, like, I'm the black girl that plays basketball here. So <laughs> I was treated with, with kindness. Um, but I was actually treated, I guess it was just more of a personal experience playing in Hungary in my small town as XR rather than playing in Turkey, like, where you just, anybody out there versus in Hungary, mm. I was, I was Eric, I was the basketball player there. Mm, mm. I think that's such a good point for you to bring up, Erica, because there are like you can't have radically different experiences based on your race, based on your nationality, you know, depending yeah. on where you are right in a place like Turkey, where there's a lot more black people, a lot more people of color, you know, people maybe aren't looking twice at you in the same way that they would in a smaller town, you know, in Hungary, like even even me here in South Africa right now. You know, people, people don't really, like, look twice at me because, like, I'm in Africa. So people yes. are just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, people are like, whatever. If anything, people are looking at me because maybe I dress different so they can tell, yeah. like, oh, she's, yeah. she's not our black. She's a yeah. black, but she's not our black. <laughs> like, that, you know, that Big was When I lived yeah. in Singapore, for example, everybody was like, who is that? What is that? Yes. Like, yes. you know. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I know. I know, girl. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so, okay, so when you go play overseas like this, how long are you in each of these places? Are you there for four months, six months? Like, how, how long are you when you go? Eight months, eight months average. Um, could be seven, depending on when you get there. But yeah, typically about eight months. I'm out there from. Okay, so that's like. Yeah. That's uh, a large majority of the year. <laughs> yeah, so it, I mean, basketball is year round if you're a, a female basketball player for most people. Um, so you usually play in the WNBA from uh, May to September, May to August, May to September, and then from September to May, <laughs> you are overseas. Those year round. Wow. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So this upcoming move to Spain, talk to us about what's happening in Spain and what's exciting about this, uh, this, this trip you have coming up. Yeah, so I'm playing for uh, from Avenida. It's in Salamanca, which is near Madrid. I'm really excited for it. It's a EuroLeague team, which means it's the uh, best league in Europe. Um, so I've never played in EuroLeague before, so I'm really excited. Uh, I've only played in EuroCup, which like the level right underneath it. Um, and and they're, they've been the Spanish Spanish champs, Spanish league champs uh, for two years. So, and it's always been my dream to play in Spain. So it's it's a level up for me. Um, so it's kind of like all my hard work is finally playing off. I, I think about, you know, when I stayed in that, you know, small little room in Hungary to now, you know, me playing on a Euro League team, which is like one of the best of the best teams in Europe. Uh, wow. It just makes me really, yeah, I'm just so excited. And I'm very blessed to be able to have this experience. Um, and it was an all in due time. I had my Hungarian coach always tell me like, one day you're going to play for, a, one day you're not going to play here anymore. You're going to play for a Euro League team, you know, and I'm getting you ready for that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there I am. Yeah, here I am. Uh, so uh, I'm really excited for this opportunity. Um, I'm really excited to get out this heat, go somewhere cooler. <laughs> uh, I think it's by the water, so I know it's gonna be a lot cooler there. So I'm a lot. I'm really excited for it, and and to to, to be able to work on my Spanish. You know, in, in California, and Bakersfield, everybody has to take Spanish class. It's only it's only classes we got. Um, so yeah. I'm really excited to work on my Spanish again. I love speaking Spanish. Um, so don't, yeah, I only know a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I think, I think as I, you know, live there longer that I'm be able to, to get better, a lot better. It'll come back to me like that. I'm hoping. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, felicidades. Congratulations. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> De nada. Thank you. This is, this is so exciting and so huge. And, you know, for you to be reaching this milestone that you wanted to hit for so long, as a professional basketball player. I mean, that's just incredible for you to be playing in this team. And again, you're going to have to like readjust to the style of basketball and yeah. to a team that's as competitive as they are, you know, and being in a whole new place, Espanol every day, you know, <laughs> and that's, that's an exciting shift. Like, what are you, what are you most excited about? What are you most nervous about? Oof, um, I'm, I'm, I'm most excited about playing in Euro league because um, that's just the top, best the best basketball being played right there and it's an honor to be able to play for this team that has made wow. it to the final four um for the past couple of years um and i've actually mm. played against this coach um coach roberto when i was in hungary and he beat us every time um so my team was always <laughs> in second place compared to his team his team was just always yeah. always so good so i'm really excited to play for him um i guess i'm most nervous about like i said it's always an adjustment for me to get used to the style of play Spanish basketball is different from Turkish basketball, which is different from Hungarian basketball. So yeah. the Spanish basketball is a lot more fluid, a lot more flashy, um, a lot of, you know, passing and cutting. Um, so that's a different style of basketball that I'm not used to, but I'm excited. I'm a bit nervous <laughs> to you know, get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what, uh, Erica, you seem like a hella quick learner. You have so much <laughs> cross-cultural capital from all the different places you've lived in before. So I have no doubts whatsoever that Thank all you. those nerves will be eased, you know, after that first month adjustment period, and then you'll be you'll be right in it. I I know that's what's gonna happen. And I love <laughs> you got someone here more about NY saying bilingual bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl right there. <laughs> I love that. You you might even be like quadrilingual bird at this point. I'm like Turkish, Hungarian, English, Spanish. I'm like, what's next, girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's always fun to be able to know some languages and, and at least know some, you know, the basics of high vibe. Thank you. Um, to be yeah. able to, even that, you know, goes a long way for you to be able to communicate with people and that nature. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think one of the things that's so incredible about what you've done with your professional basketball experience overseas is this incredible podcast that you have, Bird's Eye View, where you are having similar dialogues to the one we're having right now here on Nikki Bands Live. You're having these conversations with people who also play professional basketball overseas and sharing that insight, sharing their knowledge, sharing their experiences. Talk to us about um, how you decided to launch this podcast. Yeah, so I, I had a podcast uh, four years ago. It was called Birds the Word Podcast. Um, okay. My nickname is my nickname is Bird because my last name is McCall. Um, so it's like McCall. Um, so that's also in my <laughs> yes. intro. Um, yeah, so everyone can kind of get the the name and, and the, the the title of the show together. Um, it was like, why is it Birds Eye View? Okay, so I had a, a podcast called uh, Birds the Word Podcast, and it was about um, pop culture, uh, music, uh, a little bit of sports. Um, I, I started overseas. It was really hard to maintain overseas. I only had four episodes. Um, so my guests were all from America. I had a co-host who was my best friend, um, Ashley Brown, and, and, and she was in Bakersfield. So it was just really hard to maintain. I was doing the editing. I was doing the social media. I was making the content. It was just really hard and complicated and it sucked the, sucked the fun out of it. <laughs> so yeah. I yeah. stopped that. <laughs> I stopped that, but um, when I was in Washington last season, um, I was like talking to my to my close friend Sydney Weiss, and I was like, I think I want to start a podcast again. But I was like, but when I want to do one, I want to do one on something that I'm really knowledgeable about, so I can be able to talk about it easily. Um, something I'm passionate about, and something I can educate people on. And I was like, overseas basketball. That's that's it right there. A lot of people everywhere we go, people ask me, what's overseas basketball like? What's the food like? What's the, the basketball like? The language barrier, all that. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start a podcast on the overseas experience um and so that was what my first season was all about was strictly overseas and now the second season i just wrapped up with um it was more just the general female basketball experience of course overseas was included a part of that experience but it was just all about where they started from from college to you know where they are in the league and overseas and so it's been a blast i love having the podcast everyone check it out on all streaming platforms this is my shameless plug bird's eye view yes. <laughs> give us the plugs give us all the handles yes, so we yes, can all follow yeah. check it out you follow us on instagram at birds eye view dot podcast and on twitter which I love. I love one of the Twitter account. Um, you can find us at the number one bird's eye view and shout out to my, my programmer, my social media programmer. See, they do a wonderful job at creating all the graphics and stuff like that. So I got to shout them out and my producers shout out to them. So amazing people that help make this thing. Run. I think, I don't think a lot of people understand what we do and the background work that goes into all the stuff that makes a, a great show, a great podcast. Um, so, yeah. so, you know, I'm like, shout out to all the people that, that help us out with that. And you might do it all on your own. If you do, wow. Well, I, <laughs> well I, I was about to say, I do do it all on my own. I, was like, I might need to get your, your programmers, your producers. I might need to, you, you might need to slide some, some emails my way. Cause I need help. <laughs> Telling you having a producer was life changing. Like I, it just allowed me to just focus on creating the content. Um, mm -hmm. So then it just made it so much more. I'm like, okay, I can just focus on doing the interviews and just having fun and, and being myself rather than I got to, okay, focus on the sounds. I'm like, oh, shoot, I remember at 20 minutes in, the sound kind of cut out there. I got to go in and edit that. And it's just, woof, shout out to them. Shout out. To yes. Them. Wow. 100%, 100%. Shout out <laughs> to the people behind the scenes who help make this magic happen in front of the scenes. And honestly, Erica, but shout out to you, though, for creating such a safe space for these professional athletes around the world to be able to share their experiences. Because, you know, I truly believe that it's only when we continue to have dialogue like this, when we have this cross-cultural dialogue across different backgrounds, different perspectives, and we're able to amplify that through something like a podcast or an IG live show or whatever it is, you know, that's truly the way that we build a more inclusive society. So people can actually Absolutely. see and hear different perspectives and so that's why you know when i heard about your podcast i was like oh not only is she dope because she plays the professional basketball but also she is spreading the good word of cross-cultural <laughs> dialogue around the world which is just amazing thank you thank you no absolutely and i and i think this is going to lead me into my next point because i'd love to hear more um from your perspective about sort of like what your 
key issues are? Like, what are the main things that you really like to focus on and put out into the world? And I say that because, you know, there are so many things about your life and your career that are political, right? Number yes. one, you're Black. That's political. Just facts, right? Being Black yes. in America in the world is political. So there's that. You're also a professional female athlete. And so when we talk about discrepancies in uh, pay equity, in equality, in sports, there's a huge gap and a huge discrepancy between uh, men and women. So that's, that's number two. On yep. top of that, you are leaving the United States of America and immersing yourself yep. into a totally different cultures, communities, where you're going to face very different and unexpected challenges or nuances because you're leaving your home country and, and going somewhere else, which inevitably comes with some different, some different um, things, right? So there's so many different things, like so many different identities wrapped up into who you are. So when you, yes. either through your podcast or you know, through interviews and things, like what are the key issues that you really wanna focus on and that you really want people to be thinking critically about? Wow, great question. I've never been asked that before. That's an amazing question that just shows the host that you are. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> I think the, the, the big issues that I focus on, um, I like to talk a lot about um, other players' college experiences um, and then what their transition was like going into the league. Typically, they had to live a lavish life in college. They, you know, they flew private. They, you know, they ate great foods. They had 20,000 fans. And then when they transitioned to the WNBA, it's a completely different <laughs> experience, you know. Wow. And, and so I, I like fans to be able to see that, um, to be able to understand that that is a completely different experience and that the league needs – improvement <laughs> it needs you know a lot of improvement um when it comes to these things because um it, it shouldn't be that you get a better college experience than when you go to play against the best players in the world um right. so that's definitely a huge issue that i like to to bring up um and then another big one of course is uh playing overseas you know what that experience is like for them what issues they've had i always like to ask my guests i always ask them at the end of the season what's their craziest overseas experience and with that mm. many issues are exposed <laughs> okay <laughs> and i've gotten some crazy 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 stories on overseas um i've just received one um from tiffany mitchell she was uh playing in russia and she was saying how the team forgot to pay her light bill so she had to go down in the snow and, and it was a blizzard and she had to walk in a blizzard to a grocery store where they don't understand any English where she can try to contact someone to say, hey, my lights aren't on. <laughs> so, wow. Um, and just wow. Like, yes. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's crazy. I have one where um, the owner was a mafia owner, yet they didn't have anything. Like, they, the, the team had to bring their own toilet paper into the locker room. So, oh, <laughs> what? It's, it's what? absolute craziness. I had one where the, the taxi driver made a reverse in the freeway, you know, to go somewhere. It's just the things that we have to go through as female basketball players, you know, and it just exposes, you know, that if we were to get paid more, we wouldn't have to go overseas. Although we love playing overseas, it's, it's, a, it's a real dream of, of all female basketball players to be able to just play in the States and make great money, to be able to play wow. in front of our families. We don't have to want to go overseas and make the money that we have to make over there because we can't make the money we make in the States. And so it just shows that what we have to go through as female basketball players, um, it, it's, I get the craziest stories. It's my favorite part of the show. But um, a lot of that exposes the issues that, that we have to go through. Wow, 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 Erica, my mind is blown by all of the <laughs> examples that you've just given. It's, it's, it's not blown from an American being overseas perspective, because yes, I can yes. also give you some yes. stories. But someone in your position as a highly decorated professional athlete, that's <laughs> yes. the blowing my mind part. Like, what do you mean bringing your own toilet paper or like yes. your light bill goes off? Like, yes. come on now, like, like. <laughs> You know, like, I went to the first ever NBA Africa game here in Johannesburg oh, in 2015, yeah. and, like, none of those dudes had to even think about any of those yep. things, right? Yep. And I think yep. that what you're talking about right now, this is why your podcast and the interviews that you're having are so critical, because how else do we further the dialogue around equity for female basketball players than by sharing the stories because otherwise traditional media isn't sharing your stories. So you right. have to share your own stories. Yes. Yes. And that was the whole point of creating 
the podcast, um, to be able to, to share the stories that go unheard of, you know, in, in the women's basketball world and in the world in general. You know, a lot of people just know about the WNBA experience, um, but little do they know about what we have to go through overseas. And so now I'm just all here to create a platform for me to be able to share my story, of course, for, you know, my friends and my, my all my, my, my ball friends to be able to share theirs as well. Absolutely. And we're so grateful that you are uh, sharing these stories and that you have created this platform. So I Thank think my you. next question then is going to be, so for everyone who's watching this, or maybe you're watching the rerun on YouTube, but I upload it there, like what advice or what can you tell people? Like what, what do we do to create a more inclusive uh, payment, playing experience and overall experience for US female basketball players? Like, should we be calling our senators? Like what, what do we do? <laughs> the best. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing <laughs> that's a great one <laughs> the best thing you can do is watch the game it is as simple as that to be able to grow the game you we've got to get the numbers up um and, and people yeah. have to respect the game um and a lot of it just comes with respect a lot of men and and even women out there don't respect the women's basketball game um but man when people go to it they're like oh shoot like yeah this is this is pretty exciting um, and so it just comes with just pe getting people to, to be able to watch and to share what you know about the NBA and share for others to watch um, because it's such a fun game and we love what we do um, and we're credible athletes and we deserve the respect um, just as our male counterparts. So that's just the simplest thing is just watch the game. And you can that. watch tonight. We got a WNBA uh, playoff, two playoff games coming on tonight. We got it on 5 p.m. Um, Eastern or uh, PT time. We've got the Connecticut Sun versus Chicago Sky calling tonight. Shout out to my sister. Got to plug my sister. She's playing tonight. Hopefully they get the win. And then we have the Las Vegas Aces versus Seattle Storm on ESPN at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Sorry to the East Coasters. I know that is late, but they're going to be really, really, really great games. There have been some actually the best game of the season just happened um, a few days ago when uh, Vegas played against the Storm. So Check it out tonight, if you guys are. If you, if anyone has want to watch their first WNBA game, check it out on ESPN tonight. Got to plug the league while I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that! I love that. Shout out to your sister who's playing tonight. That's so incredible, and I love what you said. Just watch the game. Go support. Go be there. Show up. Right? And it's like so often in life, the answer is very simple. The answer is yes, show so up. Yes, so simple. Yes. <laughs> Just know? show up, please. <laughs> and so and so, I love that. Everybody out there, go show up. And I have to say, I was in L.A. for the summer. So I spent all of June, July in L.A. That's when I went to Bakersfield. Shout out to the yes. Dream Builders. I saw them <laughs> tuning in, commenting yes. in the chat. Um, <laughs> but I went, to, I went to a Sparks game. And, yes. and, and I was blessed. I, I had a friend who had courtside seeds. So I went and sat courtside oh, and it, it was phenomenal. I had so yeah. much fun. The, the, the game was amazing. The players were phenomenal. Uh, the energy and vibe in this, in the stadium, there was an incredible DJ MC keeping the crowd high. Oh, yeah. He's, just, he's amazing. I love that DJ there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, just the whole experience. I was like, this is great. I was like, if I lived in the U.S., best believe I would be here all the time. I'd be a season ticket holder, yeah. literally. So, yeah. And I mean, so that's just another plug to tell people. If you haven't gone to a WNBA game lately, the time is now. Watch time the game. Now. Go up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, some of the most entertaining basketball you will see. I guarantee if, if anyone... If any basketball fan, any sport fans would have watched the game that happened versus the Las Vegas Aces of the Seattle Storm two days ago, oh, there would have been a surplus of new fans. Incredible. Wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to try and find that, like, on YouTube or somewhere. I'll try yes, and watch the game. Yes. I need to highlight yes. I need to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> Check it out. The last two minutes. You can watch the last two minutes, and you'll be like, wow, this is incredible. So it's, it's really good. Uh. Amazing, amazing. And again, like it is just so critical to really show up and support, um, you know, the female athletes out there, because Ooh. if it's if we don't show up and if we don't continue to support you all, you know, that, then who else is going to? So just make sure everybody go support the go support the women, go support the WNBA players. I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, me, I travel a lot. I was like, oh, am I going to be in Spain anytime soon? Girl, I'm going to come yeah, to Yeah, come out to a, come out to a game. Yeah, come out. I'm I right know. By, by Madrid, so it should be fun. Come out, hit me up. Literally, I'm like, I'm going to be in Greece in two weeks. So I'm like, can I make it to Spain? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can watch some, some, some Greek games. I don't think they'll be out there yet, um, playing yet, but 
anywhere you go, there'll there'll be a there'll be a league, a basketball league you can check out. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. I mean, I actually played in the basketball tournament here in Cape Town a couple of weeks ago. Oh my okay, gosh! Okay. The way the way I have not played competitively since <laughs> Stockdale, which was thirteen <laughs> years ago. Oh my gosh! I was so tired. I was so sore. <laughs> But it was so much fun. Like, if you love it, then you love it, you know? So yes, just being able to yes. be there, to see the yes. young talent here in South Africa, yeah. it was really cool. Really, really cool. That's what's up. That's what's up. I love that. Yes, yes. We got to support. So, okay, we got about 15 minutes left here on the live. Right. Let me just make sure for everybody who's here right now, if you have questions for Erica, go to the bottom of your screen. Click on that little thought bubble with the question mark. You can go ahead and drop some questions there. I see one question already, so keep the questions coming. Maybe the last like 10 minutes of the show, I will, I will have Erica answer all of your questions. So once again, bottom of your screen, the little thought bubble with the question mark, click on that. Um, and let me just plug, if you're not following Erica on Instagram yet, go to the top of your screen. You can hit that little arrow, that little white arrow in the middle. Make sure you go follow birds, the word underscore 24. So you can make sure you're supporting Erica, supporting all of her endeavors. And then you can find her podcast as well, Bird's Eye View. So definitely go ahead and follow. And you can also follow your girl, Nikki Bands at They Call Me Bands. We're just going to give support and love all around. So. With that being said, um, I want to ask you, you know, for those of us who are your friends, your fans, your followers, we want to continue to support all the different things that you're doing, basketball and otherwise. So talk to us about what is on the horizon. You've already mentioned Spain and you're moving to Spain in this, this big exciting moment. But what else is coming up that we should be keeping an eye on and how can we continue to support you and everything you're doing around the world? Yes. Um, oof, um, I, hopefully, you know, I, I have a upcoming Twitter Spaces series coming up because um, it seemed like that's the new move. I'm, I try to follow the wave <laughs> on all the new social media stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking to start a Twitter Spaces series um, that's going to be essentially um, in addition to the podcast. Um, it'll be a little bit more broad in terms of the topics. Of course, we're talking about women's basketball, of course. Um, yeah. But it'll be it'll be more looser and, and, and less structured than the podcast and just having conversations with fans. Fan, it'll be a lot more interactive. Fans will be able to um, come on into the, the, the chat and be able to, it's kind of like, um, uh, shoot, what's that, that app that everyone using, was using in the, um, during well, the like pandemic? A, like house, house party uh yeah essentially like that yeah exactly exactly like that yeah we're everyone using it in the pandemic and everyone you know we can be able to come on and uh and talk and so it's just gonna be a lot more interactive for me to be able to interact with my fans so stay, stay tuned to that um on twitter if you guys are on twitter um and of course i'm just looking to expand the erica mccall brand just looking to get out there to be able to work with some partnerships um looking to get an agent if anyone knows anyone out there <laughs> so put it out um, there girl to, put it out for there for someone to be able to push me more um outside of myself so um mm -hmm. yeah looking to work with that um i'm actually um, going back on snapchat if people want to follow me on snapchat follow me erica mccall um and i'll be really i'm going to try to create more content to be able to show people what it's like living overseas day in the life so i'll be out there just recording some stuff but what i do out there in basketball i'm looking to maybe get one to show you know what overseas basketball players pack um which is that could be a whole episode right there so okay. <laughs> stay tuned for that yeah stay tuned for that i love that honestly I'm, i want to watch that episode because i mean you are a very tall girl i'm five <laughs> eight and i wear size 11 shoes one pair of my jordans fills up half of my suitcase so yeah i don't know how I don't know how you pack when you go over it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. And it's, it's different for everyone. Some people prioritize shoes more than, uh, than clothing. Or some people, you're only supposed to, your team only provides for you two suitcases and a carry-on. You get a carry-on. So I typically bring two big suitcases. I got a carry-on. Um, that's like a small suitcase and then a backpack. But some people bring about four suitcases. I don't, they got money. They got big money. I, I'm trying to yeah. keep it free. So I'm really trying to, I got to be strategic about what I want to bring. I can't bring that many pairs of shoes. I also always bring a surplus of going out clothes that I never wear every year. <laughs> um, so never felt I got a whole suitcase of things. Just, I'm like, oh, just in case, just in case, just in case. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a struggle every single year. I stress myself out every single year. Here I am two days before I'm supposed to leave 
trying to figure out what I'm going to post the pack. Um, <laughs> it's always overweight. So we'll just have to, you know, pray, pray for, for something and you got to figure out some things just have to go. And it's just always a yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, this is, this is, this can't go. Exactly. And I mean, to be fair, you know, going to a place like Spain versus like a small town in Hungary, let's be real. You're going to have a lot more access to a lot. Oh, more facts. Things. facts. You know, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like I did not you're gonna have going out clothes in in, in Hungary. None. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is too funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we're so excited for you to get back on the Snapchat, to start hosting the Twitter spaces, all these exciting things you have coming up, the new season of the podcast, like all of this. It's just it's Thank really, you. really, it's really cool to see. And it's it's really just beautiful to see you expanding outside of just uh, being an athlete in your athletic prowess, but also in the entertainment space, hosting, presenting, emceeing. It's really cool to see you being able to share your passions with the world uh, through this other medium and this other platform, you know, besides just basketball. So props Thank to you, you, girl. We love thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you for doing this. This is really dope for you to be able to uh, allow people to hear stories from all across the world, not even just in the USA, you know, and from different platforms and the people of different professions. And I think you had actresses and, and musicians and athletes. That's just really cool to see. So, so thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh, absolutely. You are the first professional basketball player on here. I've had one Olympian. So I had one oh, Olympic nice. athlete, yeah. Simeade Agbo, who was the first ever african winter olympian which was okay wild. it's so, giving cool runnings yeah it, it's giving it literally she does <laughs> she does not bobsled but like skeleton which is like a single person bobsled like, yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's cool runnings all the way <laughs> so truly to have you on and to have you as part of my prestigious alumni of nikki Vans live is just, yes, just yes. so yes. truly lovely so thank you no it's been such a vibe and I am seeing that we have um, two questions All in right. the chat, and I want to I want to ask these. These are great questions. So we have a question here from Julia Lene. This is actually uh, my roommate. She's in the other room. <laughs> Shout out to my roommate, <laughs> Julia. Okay. <laughs> Thank we you, Julia. Um, so this question is from Julia. She says, "How does the multi-country, year-round lifestyle?" of a professional women's basketball player affect your social and personal life? So for example, can you, are you able to have families and kids when you're traveling so much? Are you able to date? Like, how does that work out? And is that an option for you? Yeah, it's exhausting. That's the word I think a lot of people will, will use to describe, you know, what our lifestyle is like. We just never have any breaks. We never have any off season rare time to go on vacation I don't remember I've never been on vacation in my professional life um for me wow. to just take time because I'm just always like I can't get out of shape I gotta go play basketball you know in a week um so it, it's exhausting and it's hard on your social life I've never had a relationship even when I was in college where I was in the same city or even four hours away from the person you know like the closest I've been wow. to someone was four hours away so I've only had long distance relationships and it just makes it really hard to be able to meet new people um, because it's all like via social media, you know, you can't really have a one-on-one -on -one bond with them um, in person. Um, it's hard to communicate with your family. Um, we are, I'll be nine hours um, away. So the time is just nine and it's hard to communicate with them. Um, you find a good time to like where you can talk to your family and stuff like that, but it's just hard. Um, you typically don't see them. Um, my family sometimes they can come visit me, but it's it's hard. It's an expensive flight. Um, you gotta take off from work. So typically it's just me out there. So it's it's a hard it's a hard profession that we have for a lot of basketball players. But we love we love what we do. We love the game. Um, you know it's all worth it for you know in the end. You know when you get to say you're you're living out the dream, but there are some downfalls to it, and definitely the social life. Gotta take the back door when <laughs> you're professional basketball. Player. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for uh, sure. Well, Erica, we we appreciate that honesty um, and that it is hard. It's hard to have that social yeah. life, that personal life. I mean, even look at you know uh, Serena Williams's retirement, right? Because she yeah. wants to be able to have a family and focus on things yeah. that she can't. Yeah. Being a full time professional female athlete, right? Things that yeah. 
male athletes don't have to always think about, right? So it's yeah. just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to, again, keep sharing that story and sharing that narrative because we have to remember that like you're out here also trying to also have a social life trying to also have yeah. a personal life and then yeah. it's hard <laughs> yeah you gotta like literally plan when you want to have a child like most people plan for when they're on a child and shout out to the league um the players organization really the um they've sent out um, fertility kits essentially where you can um be able to freeze your eggs or something it's something of that nature i'm not for sure like what the exact thing is but essentially they sent out um fertility care um so you can kind of plan on when you want to have children because they know for like athletes like us it's hard to be able to have children. shout out to my sister she had twins i don't know how she's still even playing basketball but she had <laughs> twins and she <laughs> you know was out for a year but it's hard you know to be able to you know have children and be able to play in the league and she's got to worry about child care um, she's got to worry you know, and she still goes overseas um, so it's very hard for her to be able to balance that but she does it with grace um, a lot of, mm. the, of the women that play basketball do but it's it's really hard wow wow well I see Julia in the chat saying another very political side to the industry uh, and she's saying thank you so much for sharing that perspective and thank you yeah because it's like these are things that we have to remind ourselves for you to be able to compete at the highest oh, yeah. level means that other things are going to take a back seat which is yeah. challenging yeah. Um, and, and speaking of uh, challenging conversations, I know we only have four minutes left, but the other question that's in here, which I actually did want to ask, but it's a bombshell for the last oh, okay. five minutes, but uh, it's actually from my mom, of course. Shout out to my Come fans, on, always highly engaged on my lives. <laughs> um, but so my mom is asking, what are your thoughts on Brittany Griner's situation? Oh, yeah. Um, man, BG, praying for her. Um, it's it's been it's been a really hard season on the league emotionally, um, mm. specifically for the Phoenix Mercury. They've really struggled. Um, just 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 had a surplus of issues going on to it with the base issue being that BG is incarcerated in Russia. Um, so it's just been a really emotional season for the league, and so I really commend all the players that really just got through it. You know, didn't you have to worry about succeeding or making it to play up, but just like got through that season because um, BG is our sister um, and, and many people in the league who are close with her and have a great relationship with her um, and, they're, and they're struggling with it. Um, and so I'm praying that she gets out soon. I know, um, you know, thank God that the president has been able to step into the situation and be able to communicate with Russia as to how we can get her out as soon as possible. Um, it just, it just really hurts, you know, to see her, um, you know, luckily I think it was, it was 200, uh, days uh, yesterday, so I think today walks 201 days since she's been incarcerated, which is wow, so long. Um, and it, and it's tough um, because you know everyone asks us, you know, how does it affect us as basketball players? Do we fear our safety? Um, many people aren't playing in Russia. I don't know any of them, any Americans playing in Russia, going to play in Russia. Um, one, Russia's kind of been banned, kind of from the European scene, so they won't mm. be in Euro League or Euro Cup. So a lot of people aren't playing. Um, due to that, um, and due just because BG's there knows the situation. Everyone knows the situation that's happening in Russia. Plus, they're in the middle of a war. That's it's just a lot of reasons as to why you wouldn't play in Russia. Um, but also, um, a lot of people know it's an isolated situation. So although we we want BG home, and it hurts to see her out there in Russia, we also know that um, that's a situation that's very rare. Um, in that we still have to go on, you know, about our professions and to, to make money. And so a lot of us aren't feeling too nervous about traveling overseas because we've just been doing mm. it for so long. And we just feel like that was a really isolated situation um, when, it came, when it came to BG. Um, so we're all going out there. Um, of course, we'll be out there supporting her and, and wishing her well and, and praying that she gets home as soon as possible. But uh, most of the people that I know are going overseas um, you know, still make, you know, our living and, and play the game that we love. And I know BG would want us to do the same. Mm, mm, that's so powerful, Erica. I'm so grateful for you sharing and for and for being honest. I see people in the chat, shout out to my girl Carrie saying free Brittany Griner. I mean, absolutely. And I think it's it's so important and it's actually so helpful to hear your perspective on it. And the reality is like, you still have to continue to make a living as a, as a female professional basketball player, which means you have to go overseas. That's a reality yeah. of being a professional basketball player in the United States and being a woman is that like for your livelihood, you have yeah. to keep playing 
you know, overseas, even when something absolutely tragic happens to one of your own. So um, absolutely, it's, it's great that the president has gotten involved, but we need more involvement. We need more yes. engagement. We need more people talking about Brittany Griner. Yes. And we need more people uh, working diplomatically and, and maybe even not diplomatically to make sure yeah. that, that she gets home as soon as possible yeah. because it's an absolutely devastating and, to be frank, disgusting situation, you know, to yeah. see um, a, a very talented athlete locked up overseas and the United States government isn't doing every single thing possible to, to, to already have her out. You know, you, the fact yeah. that you just said it's what day number 201, you know, yeah. that's, that's ludicrous. Like, can you imagine, like, it, it wouldn't be LeBron. It wouldn't no, be I, no. Steph Curry. Yeah. Like that, Maybe that like wouldn't that. be a thing. That yeah. wouldn't be a thing. So like, let's, let's give female athletes the respect that you all deserve. Uh, the 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 everything that you deserve, so yeah. you can have a lifestyle in the United States and overseas, um, you know, where you don't have to fear for your safety, where you don't have to fear yes. for your salary. <laughs> yes, yes, facts. Yeah, yeah. Well, very powerful way to end this conversation. But I'm glad that the question was asked. Um, it's like you know we have to talk about the things that are going on in the world right Absolutely. now. You know, and Absolutely, that's real thing. life. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, exactly. But but truly, Erica, it has just been such an absolute pleasure talking to you, hearing more about what you're doing and the, the, the athletic uh, just ability that you have. It's so incredible to see and to see you, you know, literally, like I said, Bakersfield to Barcelona, right? <laughs> like, it's just like, that is just incredible. And you are such an inspiration to so many people, myself included. Um, so keep traveling the world, keep hooping, keep sharing these stories because people need to hear them. And I just really appreciate you for being a guest here on Nikki Bands Live. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Erica, we'll be in touch again very soon. Everybody, I'm here every single Tuesday with a new guest from a new country. Don't forget to tune in to Nikki Bands Live at They Call Me Bands. Thank you, Erica, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending <laughs> on where you are in the world. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, Erica. Bye.